Hi, welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda and today we are in my garage because as you saw from the title of this video, I'm going to be going over my camp kitchen. The things that I pack and I keep stored in my garage so that when it's time to go to camp, I just have to grab and we can go away for the weekend. So I have been a campfire cooker is that the right term, campfire cooker? Since I was in about second grade, I love it. It's one of my passions. I have done all kinds of fire cooking from using Girl Scout buddy burners, which I'll try to find a picture of because I don't currently have one. And I've done the foil box ovens, which that is a really fun way to cook. Yeah, and then just like all different kinds of fires, Dutch ovens, pie iron cooking like you can see in my last two videos so let me show you what i think some essentials are so i'm gonna pull out some stuff and we'll talk about it <sighs> hairs up it's kind of muggy out here one of the first things that i want to talk about before i start talking about the kit is that there are different types of campers okay so let's get that straight right off the bat i am what i call a car camper i pull my minivan up to camp and we like spew forth so much stuff and have fun camping for the weekend there are minimalist campers that are like hikers where everything they need to pack for the weekend is on their back in a backpack that's not me <laughs> There's also, you know, what the kind of tent camper, car camper that I am. Then you've got glampers that go all out with like blow up furniture. And sometimes they pack, they stay in like cabins. Sometimes they go in fancier tents. You've got RVers. So I am what you call car camper. So with that in mind, I do pack a lot of equipment and you can decide what you think would work for your family. So now let's talk about what I bring. So the first thing that I pack is one of these fold up tables because most campgrounds that I stay at that are state campgrounds do have picnic tables at the campsite, but I like having a separate table that I can use to prep and cook with. Then the, we leave the, the uh, picnic table for eating and arts and crafts for the kids and that way we can keep the kitchen up on a table without having to break it down and put it back up anytime we need to use the picnic table and i say we because i usually camp with a friend and we do side by side camping so we're, we both have our own kitchens and both stuff like that a lot of times it's just really helpful to have this separate table and there have been times where i've shown up at a campground that didn't have a picnic table and then this was a lifesaver now, while I am a campfire cooker, where I live, we are often under fire bans. So having a Coleman propane stove definitely helps. And even when we are not under a fire ban, I still like to bring my Coleman stove because frankly, it's just better to use it to make hot water in the morning for hot cocoa while you are prepping up your fire. But this is something that has been more of a recent addition. I used to never cook with propane stoves. Okay, next up, let's talk about the crucial items that you need to cook over a fire. Most of the campfire, uh, again, state parks that I camp out have a big fire ring with a grate. My friend Angela always brings a spare grate just in case because, again, we have been at campsites before that don't have the grate or the grate doesn't work. And while a lot of campfire cooking, you can hook directly down into the coals, having a grate for certain dishes also helps. So that is something that I probably need to add to my camp gear is a grate. But again, when you camp with a friend all the time, sometimes you know what they have and what you have and it can overlap. Now, one thing that is critical is a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet. And if you can have if you can only have one, pick the Dutch oven because the Dutch oven can do everything the cast iron skillet can do and more. But if you can have both, then this is a little bit easier to clean than a Dutch oven just because it's easier to get in there. So if, like I said, if you could only, if you only need one, this, but I like having both. So my preferred brand for cast iron cooking is Lodge 
but this I was given this Dutch oven kit as a gift and it is a beautiful set so I love it there's different things to look for in a Dutch oven mine does not have the feet that some of them do the good thing about having the feet is that when you set it down in the coals it can be more stable so without the feet you know you just might have to be a little bit more careful the other thing that's cool about the lid there's two kinds of lids there's ones that have like little um rivets or like little spikes kind of all over the lid that helps with moisture circulation somehow i'm sure somebody else knows more about the science about it but if you get one that doesn't you can actually use the lid upside down to like a griddle like to make pancakes and stuff so don't forget if you keep your lid seasoned on both sides it can work multiple ways i've even seen people cook like you know pizzas and stuff one thing about mine is it's not balanced so when you hold it up you see how it tilts and so a higher quality one will be more balanced so that might be something to look for if you are buying a cast iron skillet blah, blah, a cast iron dutch oven and having this carrying case is really a nice benefit the zipper broke on it but it's still super great now i'm not going to be talking about how to clean cast iron skillet that would be a whole entire separate video and frankly i'm not the best uh person you want to talk to about that because i am pretty rough on my cast iron like people say never ever ever use soap on your cast iron mm, this girl does so don't listen to me so this is my favorite cast iron skillet it is a lodge one and you will see this in many of my cooking videos because I cook with this in my kitchen. Now, I haven't uh, brought it back inside since our last camping trip, so I do need to clean it because if you cook on a fire with it, the bottom of this skillet is going to be covered in soot. So before I take this into my kitchen, I'm going to take it out by my hose and scrub off all this soot that I know is on the back of this uh, cast iron skillet but that is definitely on my to-do list and again I highly recommend a silicone oven mitt to like let people know that the handle's hot so when I am serving it I put it on there this I would not leave on the fire I after I'm done cooking is when I would put this on so that as people are dishing it up they're not touching a hot handle okay so this is also just amazing for making pancakes and eggs you know it's a if you ha take care of your cast iron skillet it becomes a really amazing non-stick surface okay next pie iron so this is just a fun oh my gosh i've only gotten these in the last couple of years i do not think this is a necessary for campfire cooking because almost anything you can do in a pie iron you can do in your dutch oven or your skillet but especially if you've got kids that like to like do s'mores and they want to rotate things over the fire pie irons can be a lot of fun i find they're actually a little bit more difficult to clean because they're just they have like all these grooves and <clears throat> but again they're fun so i did do pie iron pizzas Ugh, man these are strapped down really well um so I just bought this case, so I really recommend it. And I'm going to put down a bunch of links to different things that I recommend down in my description box. So again, these are really fun. You can do a lot of desserts and pizzas and like pocket foods. And then of course, you gotta have your s'more sticks. I mean, honestly, I grew up using a stick from the wood, but the problem is now if you are a lot of state camps, because there's so many people that come through sometimes it's actually kind of hard to find a good long stick for campfire um, use so having a couple of different i've got several different types here of s'more sticks so they're super cheap so it's just easy to add to your list okay and then i have this is my cast iron skillet you can use it to hook up the lid you can use it to carry your Dutch oven. So I really recommend if you do get a Dutch oven, make sure it comes with, or you buy this piece separately. And then this is a trivet 
which is really nice to have next to the fire because you can put your lid on it if you're checking your food so it doesn't get dirty. You can put your cast iron skillet on it so that you don't melt your table, you know, so it's really good to have this trivet. This one also can lift up your cast iron skillet, but then you don't have a trivet to set things on. So I do like having them both, but if you can only have one, you know, this does do multi-purpose. Okay. Oh, and then last thing, uh, I have a set of extra long tongs that I keep by the fire and we use these actually to <laughs> grab wood and move it around and poke it around. And you need something that you can manipulate your fire with, whether it's tongs, it's a good, sticks are a little bit hard because it is nice to be able to pick up a log and kind of place uh, like a burning log and place it where you want to place it and pick up coals to set on top of your Dutch oven when you're doing some kind of baked good. So I do like to have a really set, good set of long tongs. Now, the one item that I don't have that my friend Angela has that I want to put on my list, she has a foldable little tiny uh, camp shovel that she keeps in her gear. And when it's time to put the fire out, using that shovel to kind of bury the coals into the dirt and ash, it just really helps put out the fire because you do not want to drown. We'll sprinkle some water on our fire, but you'd never ever want to drown the fire pit because then making your next fire on wet, soggy fire pit is no fun. All right, let's get to the next, next item. Okay, so this is my, pretty much my kitchen camp kit to go. I keep everything in this big bin, so that way I'm not raiding my kitchen when it's time to go to camp. And I know that when I get to camp, I pretty much have everything that I need and I'm not scrambling and trying to be like, oh my gosh, I forgot to pack a spatula this time because I forgot I was gonna make pancakes. So, if you are someone who camps a lot, keeping a second set of camp gear in your garage or storage is recommended highly. And that way you're not worried about it at camp, ruining it. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I picked up at Goodwill or, you know, free places. You don't have to spend a lot on your camp kitchen, but camping, cooking is already an added difficulty so there are some places that you don't want to skimp out on. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of talk about the stuff that I keep in this bin and note that this bin is clear. That is so helpful. I used to have it, I think in this bin and I went out and bought a clear bin because that way when you're looking for something, you can kind of see it on the outside and know where to dig in. So one of the things that I'm highly debating is about camp dishes. So I've been lucky, these are not cheap, but if you're lucky, you can find these at Goodwill. And I have a set of five to six of these plates and dishes, but they are heavy. So I, oh, there's a fork. So this last camping trip, when I, when I was at the grocery store, they had a set of these pretty teal and green dishes that I just love the colors of. And I got like a huge set. They were all on sale. It was at the end of last summer actually. And they put them on for sale. I got the entire set that I'm gonna pull out for like $15. And I was like, I can't pass that up. They're so lightweight. So I'm kind of debating like, oh my gosh, see, these are heavy. And so when you can make your camp gear a little bit lighter, so the last time I went camping, I took these plates and left these at home. And I'm kind of on the fence because I do love the traditional look and feel of the metal, but <sighs> lightness sometimes wins out. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about those yet. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them, sell them, or which way I'm gonna go. But here's the plates. Okay, so again, because we do have fire bands a lot in this area, I do keep a set of pots and pans that I use for my Coleman stove, but really just one skillet and one uh, pot would probably do you. I also will use my cast iron skillet on my Coleman stove. It works just perfectly fine. My only advice is if you know you're not gonna be campfire cooking, then I leave my cast iron at home because you know why lug the heavier skillet if you don't need it? So 
This is, again, this is decent quality. Well, this is actually really good quality. This is Paul Revere wear, which is really good. My mom, if she's watching this video, it's gonna be like, hey, that's where my Paul Revere went. So yes, mom, it is getting a lot of good use. It is in my camp, uh, <laughs> camp gear, but you can also, again, find this stuff at Goodwill a lot of times. And the reason why you don't want the cheapest stuff is because when you're cooking over a propane stove, you want a skillet that's going to try to maintain the heat. I mean, I'm not using my all clad out on my camp, but Paul Revere wear is really nice. It's got the copper bottom that's going to spread the heat and you want it to work for you and not against you so that your food doesn't burn because um, cooking on a propane stove, it can be difficult. Okay, so I keep this big bowl for to mix, pancake mix, you know, any kind, anything like that. It does have some measurements on the side. So it's nice to have some kind of good mixing bowl. I like that this one has a handle and a spout. It's actually bigger than my pots. So nesting is very important. Okay, um, this will go in my cooler, but I keep it in my kitchen, my camp box in the garage because it keeps your eggs from getting crushed. So pick this up at any camp place, super handy to have. I always keep paper towels with me when I'm camping. And uh, on my part two, oh no, if someone's about to start doing laundry, uh, their yard, if someone's about to start doing the yard, I might have to pause this video. Yep, we'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully the neighborhood will be quiet again soon. Okay, so got a couple of propane things for my camp stove. Two is more than enough for like, I usually go camping for three nights. Apparently I took three last week. Okay, definitely need a trash bag so that you can keep your campsite nice and clean you're going to need ziploc bags because anything that you put in your cooler you need to seal up nice and tight because as the ice melts you don't want water the ice water getting into like your lunch meats and things like that and even if the lunch meat has one of those seals or cheese you want to double bag it um i use more ziploc bags on camping trips than any other time of the year. Uh, you want a giant thing of hand sanitizer because you don't have a sink nearby. So you wanna be hand sanitizing your hands as you're cooking. <laughs> I need to replace this one. I accidentally bought the Thai storage bags, the twist tie kind instead of the zip ones. And that kind of sucked because again, you wanna seal stuff up. So I'm gonna actually take these out of the camp box and make sure. So I, I like to have quart and gallon size, but if you just have to have one, I would go with the gallon. Ten foils, always a must camping. You can do campfire ten foil dinners. Those are always fun, but also, you know, just to cover your dishes, to put up some leftovers. So having foil on hand is super helpful. You want a really nice oven mitt. Um, whether you're working with your propane stove or your fire pit stove, I want to get one of those heavy duty oven mitts that they sell for like barbecuing and stuff. But in the meantime, I'm just really careful and I use this tea kettle. So you can tell this used to be just stainless steel. Now it's all nice and black because I will put this on the grate and when I'm doing campfire, but I also cook with it on my Coleman stove. It's good because, you know, gotta have my hot tea and I've got to boil water. Sometimes I want to boil water when I'm washing my dishes for a little bit extra clean. So I did keep <laughs> these two mugs this last time for my kids to have hot chocolate. Although, oh my gosh, I fell in love with this mug. I got this at Fred Meyer. It's nothing like I don't, HD Designs Outdoors. I don't know if I can find this for you, but this is the best mug that I have come across. It's slightly insulated, so it kept my tea nice and hot. It has a lid that has a straw spot, 
and a sippy spot. So love this mug. You want a lid for your pots because if you're boiling pasta or whatever, you know, you need a lid. I use these little metal scrubbers to clean my cast iron skillet to keep extras. Gotta have a fire starter. Okay, this should not be in this bucket. This needs to be in this bucket, which I will talk about the other camp gear that I bring in part two of this series. Okay, so it's nice to have different size cups. And I actually, again, Goodwill find, like to have something where I can organize and I just keep this out on my table and it's for all my cooking appliances. So I like to just set up like I'm having a little kitchen cook, a, a little outdoor kitchen. Ugh. So I will say I didn't enjoy having plastic silverware at camp. I think I prefer having real silverware, which I do have extras in this bucket, but this is what I took camping this time, like I said, because I was trying out all my plastic dishes. Now, this is not an expensive knife. It's T-Fowl, but when you go camping, make sure your knife is sharp. Like I said before, camping already adds a difficulty level. If you take a dull knife to camp, you are going to have major regrets. You definitely want a pair of scissors, opening up cheese packets, or just, there's just so many times where you need scissors, so bring scissors. Then, <laughs> This is my goofy ball whisk. It was just an extra whisk I had, so I threw it in the camping gear. Make sure you have a can opener with you. One thing I don't have is a bottle opener. I don't really drink beer, but um, if you drink beer, you probably want a bottle opener. Then you got your spatula and your stirring spoons, all that kind of stuff. Oh, vegetable peeler. I don't use it often because a lot of times I'll prep stuff before camp, but just throw a cheapy one in your camp gear. It's good. Okay. So I also have, I always keep salt and pepper in my camp gear. I've got another hand sanitizer. Sometimes I do double up. I've got another oven mitt, a second knife, although one is really plenty. The thing is over the years, sometimes, you know, more stuff. I didn't use these bowls at camp because you can see they still have the, the sticker on them, but I just really liked the size of these. If you're eating a casserole or something at camp, then this might be really nice. And again, like I said, I got like all of this on sale, so cheap that I just couldn't turn it down. These were perfect. I used these in my spaghetti video and oh my God, these are like, ah, these are the perfect snack, snack size or yogurt or trail mix. So don't you don't need this many dishes for camp, but whatever. It's useful to have a collapsible a collapsible colander at camp, but like this last time when I did the macaroni and cheese video, I hit it and did not need to drain my noodles because trying to drain things at camp can be difficult. But because this is collapsible and doesn't take up much space, I do keep it in my camp kitchen. Okay, and then let's see. I've got a couple other duplicates in here. I have this, but I might, re I might take it out because I have not used a pitcher at camp in the last several trips that I've gone. So and, and if, if you're mixing up lemonade or something for, you might want to have a pitcher, but I just haven't used it. Now I do keep a very large cutting board because when you are at camp, the table surfaces that you're working at aren't always the cleanest. And so being able to have a nice, big, clean surface to cut on is good. But then I also keep a smaller one for if I'm just, you know, prepping up a snack or something that's smaller. Okay, so another thing when you are camping, you have to do all your dishes by hand. And so I have tried those collapsible sinks before and they tend to be more trouble than they will, they're worth. They, the weight of the water is supposed to help keep the sides up, but especially because washing the dishes is my kids chore at camp. 
it's just better to prepare, give them something that actually works. So these are actually Ikea bins, but you can use whatever bins that you have. Just find a good size. And I have one for soapy water and one for rinsing. And then I like these collapsible water bins and then they come with a spout. So we will take our wagon down to wherever the camp water spigot is and fill up a couple of these. And I've been really lucky. They have not leaked on me. I've had these for many years. I like that you can see inside of them. They also sell like a big blue hardcore one. If you get that one, when you get home, make sure, and even with these, rinse them out with a, like a tablespoon or two of bleach and let them dry out completely because you don't want mold to get in these and that hard blue one you can't see inside of it and so that always makes me a little squirmy but i like these because they do collapse down um it my friend angela she's had them leak on her before and it's no fun to get caught at camp without an easy source of water so it's definitely good to have two because then hopefully one doesn't leak but i also like to fill up two at a time so that way you don't have to go to the water spigot as often so we use this um, to, you know, do our dishes and yeah. All right. So one last thing and then we'll wrap this video up. And the last thing that I want to talk about for my camp kitchen is the ice chest. So I just have this kind of medium size ice chest and then I have a much smaller one right here. So oh, I'm trying to show you the size of it. I mean, it's kind of medium to small. It's bigger than the one down. <laughs> that one is smaller than the one down there. And I have an even smaller one up there. The reason why it's nice to have smaller, multiple smaller ice chests than one giant large ones is just for flexibility. Like when I'm packing up my car, if you have a big ice chest that you have to pack around, it's harder to pack around. They also get extremely heavy and so having multiple small ones you know it's easier to carry and throughout the year if i just want to take a smaller ice chest then to like a day event i'm not stuck with just a giant one and a lot of times in my bigger one i will keep the dinner i will keep the dinners and like food items and then maybe in my smaller one i'll pack up some drinks and like yogurt snacks and things like that so i just like i like having i usually bring these two to camp just for the flexibility sake well i hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something i've been camping for many many years like i said so if you have any questions please comment down below. If you have any tips that I didn't cover, please let me know because I love learning new things. Also, make sure that you look for part two of this video where I'm gonna go over all the camp equipment that I take to camp that is not related to the kitchen. And make sure you check out the description box because I will try to link some products that I have found useful. And anytime you click on my links and buy from Amazon, it helps my channel. So I really, really appreciate that. Make sure that you check out my camp cooking and other cooking videos and hit that subscribe button. Until the next time, bye guys.